Conventional sales wisdom is that the reason most customers don't make a decision is status quo bias. If you're faced with a decision that doesn't have a clear winning option, it's preferable to do nothing. Why change if you don't have to? The typical sales response to this is to sell harder. Reiterate your benefits. Ramp up fear of what might happen without your product. Matt explains why this doesn't work. When you think about what salespeople are, are trained to believe um, and what, what, ha what they're told by their managers and what their managers are told by their sales leaders, it is very much what you just said, which is, look, if the customer starts to disengage, if they start to show signs of heading down into that wasteland of no decision, it's because they are still suffering from status quo bias, right? You haven't put the status quo to bed. Either they believe what they do today is good enough, uh, they don't believe that your your product or your service is a compelling enough reason to change, right? It's not a superior enough alternative. Or maybe they just don't think it's a top priority, right? I've got other other priorities, other fish to fry. But all of those reasons are because they've they've are still committed to their status quo and you need to break the gravitational pull of the status quo. And as you said very well, like every salesperson knows that customers regularly will pass up on better opportunities sitting right before them in in instead just you continue to do what they do, right? People are lazy. They like to avoid change. So it takes a lot to get somebody off their status quo. But in a world where salespeople have been taught that anytime a customer starts to ghost you or disengage or go radio silent or start to, you know, get cold feet is because you haven't beaten the status quo. What we tell salespeople to do is go back uh, and do a few things. So first of the first thing we tell them to do is go back and re-articulate the benefits of, of our product and service. So Roger, you must have missed when I showed you how many zeros there were on that ROI calculation and how much money you're going to make by, you know, how much money you're going to save and how great this is going to be. So we try to paint the rosy picture. If that, if that fails, the second thing we tell salespeople to do is dial up the FUD, right? To the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, uh, to try to create a burning platform, make the customer squirm a bit, right? You know, Roger, these problems are not going to, you can't wish them away. They're not going to solve themselves. Um, your competitors are all using our product and they're seeing tremendous benefits. And I'd hate for you to be left alone with your terrible current, uh, current solution. So again, we try to get the customer to realize the cost of their inaction. And the third thing we often see salespeople do is they try to use that sort of disappearing discount. Like, well, you know, I, I understand you might, this might not be the right time, but you know, that 10% discount I, I gave you is really only good this quarter. And I can't give you that price next quarter prices go back up or leveraging like a, uh, an implementation window. So we'd love to get you up and running with our solution, but our platform but we only have a certain number of implementation slots. If you don't sign up now, I can't guarantee you when we'll be able to get this installed for you. Think about supply chain shortages, right? Yep. We only have a certain number of those products in stock, and I don't know when we'll get it back in stock. I can, cannot guarantee. So if you don't buy it, you know we've only got a few left and nothing I can do. So we, so what we're trying to do is get the customer off their status quo by dialing up the FOMO, right? the fear of missing out. And what we found in the research is that, uh, that more often than not, those techniques actually backfire. Uh, they, don't, they don't actually get the customer off the fence. In fact, they make it more likely the customer will, will do nothing. And the question is, is why? And, and you asked it before. So what really is driving the customer to become in, indecisive? And what we found is it's it's not your your inability to make them appreciate the FOMO, to dial up the FOMO. It's the FOMU. It's the not the fear of missing out. It's their fear of messing up. And so when we actually look at that uh, in, in detail, what we find is this is a good representation of not status quo bias, but what's called omission bias. Omission bias is about um, when I'm looking at two paths, one is a path where I, I lose but it's it's through inaction. I, something bad happens, but it's because I did nothing. Versus something bad happens because I did something. Human beings are wired to avoid uh, the second that second path and to go for the first path. Nobody wants to be on the hook for a loss that they are personally responsible for.